Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. Spectrum analyzers. What are they and what do they do? Well, I mentioned them in my video on time domain versus frequency domain. If you're interested in that, the link for that is up here in the corner for you. I do give some explanation in that video, but I really do not go into any detail because that would have been beyond the scope of that video. In this video, I will be explaining exactly what a spectrum analyzer does for us. In the next video, I will help you understand how it does what it does, and the link to this video is up here in the corner for you too. In the third video in this series, I will be providing a step-by-step -step description of how to use the spectrum analyzer. The link to this video, well, you guessed it, is up in the corner for you. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. To begin with, I have to spend a little bit of time talking about the nature of the signals that we're going to be looking at with our spectrum analyzer. Signals, signals, signals. They're all over. They're inside of all of our projects and in the air all around us. If we've ever used an oscilloscope, we're used to thinking about them in the time domain. We can see what it looks like as time is progressing along. But there's so much more to them than this. In the very complex world of the mathematical representation of signals, they divide up the world of signals into two distinct groups. First are the periodic signals. Second are the non-periodic signals. As the name suggests, periodic signals have time domain waveforms that consistently repeat through time. These would be like the RF carrier of a transmitter, the output of a signal generator, or maybe a tone that we might hear. All of these signals can be represented by a mathematical expression of the addition of sine and cosine waves of various frequencies and amplitudes. The classic example of this concept is the square wave. The mathematical expression for a square wave consists of a sine wave at the fundamental frequency plus sine waves of the odd harmonics of the fundamental in ever-decreasing amplitudes. Now, this is something you can experiment with in Excel. I've made my Excel playground for this available to you. See the link in the description below. Now, here is the time domain equation for a square wave. This formula calculates the instantaneous voltage of our signal at any time, t. The first term is the fundamental or first harmonic. V max is the maximum peak voltage of the sine wave. Then you ask, well, what is that weird W in there? Well, that's the, an omega, which is the standard symbol. It is the frequency in radians per second. And you go, huh? You just made it worse. Well, Excel thinks about angles in terms of radians. There are two times pi radians in a complete circle. In the case of signals, that would be a complete cycle. So one hertz is the same thing as two times pi radians per second. If we want to play in our spreadsheet in hertz, then we replace that omega with two times pi times the frequency in hertz. T is the time in seconds. Then we have the n sub odd term. This means that you create multiple terms, each one with ever increasing odd numbers, three, five, seven, nine, and so on. So if you go up to n equals nine, then there would be a total of four additional terms beyond the fundamental. Okay, so back to our example. When we add all of these sine wave signals together, we get something that looks like this in the time domain. The more harmonics we add to the series, the more like a square wave it looks. If we were to simply look at a signal on our oscilloscope, we would never know what actually makes up this odd-looking waveform. 
Conversely, there are the non-periodic signals. Non-periodic signals have time domain signals that do not repeat through time. These would be things like the sound of someone's voice as they talk to you, or the sound of your radio when it is between stations. These sorts of signals do not lend themselves to being described mathematically because of their ever-changing nature. Nonetheless, they're still comprised of the addition of sine and cosine waves of various frequencies and amplitudes. The difference is this composition constantly changes with time. So what does a spectrum analyzer do? A spectrum analyzer allows us to peek into this realm of the sine and cosine waves, also known as the frequency content of a signal. As the trace of an oscilloscope travels from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen, it is displaying the voltage of a signal as time progresses. As the trace of the spectrum analyzer moves from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen, it is moving from a lower frequency to a higher frequency and showing the amplitude of the signal at the various frequencies that make up the signal. In our case of a square wave, we would see something like this. The vertical axis is in dB as, as opposed to volts, and the horizontal axis is frequency as opposed to time. Now, here's a case in point. We have a 20 megahertz signal that we're looking at on the oscilloscope. You know, this looks nice and clean in the time domain. Now, let's see what it looks like in the frequency domain. There are clearly some non-20 megahertz components here. I can see a 30 megahertz component and a significant 40 megahertz component to our signal. So the spectrum analyzer shows us the frequency content of a signal, which can reveal things we cannot see on our oscilloscope. You now have an idea of what a spectrum analyzer does. In the next video, I will reveal how it does what it does. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, to Lutz.